Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the presidential D&D campaign, where AI-voiced U.S. presidents play Dungeons & Dragons with me, Ben Shapiro, your AI dungeon master. God, Ben, you say literally the exact same thing every single time. Yeah, it's a common thing called an intro, Donald. You should know that, didn't you host that one TV show back in the day? The one where you would fire people or whatever? Yeah, so? Didn't you have an intro for that? I don't know, maybe. I was the star of that show. I didn't need to really pay that much attention. But you were firing people. Yeah, whoever they told me to. Come on, guys. I can see that you've never been the star before. With my good looks, all I had to do was go where they told me and read a script, that's all. I also do the intro so that it is very clear that these are all AI voices. Obviously, nobody would guess that the four of us would be playing Dungeons & Dragons together, but we want to always be on the safe side that this is just a parody. I guess that's a good point. All right, I believe it's your turn for the recap, Donald. I always get the boring recaps. All right, we left the graveyard and then went to the castle, found King Rex, but he is in a coma or something, and then Thorn came back. He is trying to send us out as assassins, which I am all for, but first we need to kill Thorn. If you missed any of the previous episodes, they can be found here. Who is this guy we are killing, Thrown, you said? For the last time, Joe, it's Thorn, and he is the guy who hired us all and started us off on this quest, and then betrayed us and sent us and the whole town to Ravenloft. I swear, if we have to tell you this one more time, I am going to come over there and slap you into next week. I thought you were supposed to be the calm one, Obama. I was. How many times has Joe asked that this campaign, though? I swear, he's just messing with us at this point. Of course I'm just messing with you guys. I know who Peter is. God, if you aren't going to slap him, I will, Barack. All right, guys, let's get started. Our session is going to be starting in the throne room. King Rex is behind an impenetrable wall behind you, and Thorn is up on a balcony above the door. I want to shoot my crossbow at him. All right, you did say you had your sword and shield out, or actually a sword and the torch. It would take you a second to put those away and grab your crossbow. Oh yeah, I forgot I had took the torch back. I want to throw the torch at him. All right, roll an attack using your strength as a modifier. You won't add your proficiency bonus, though. I don't think you've really practiced with torch throwing. I've practiced with everything, but fine. Damn, that's only a 10. You chuck the torch at Thorn, caring more for the strength behind it than aiming well. As the torch spirals through the air, it's actually looking like it would be a pretty good shot. Then the flame goes out, it pauses in the air for a second, and then flies fast at the green barrier, melting as it makes contact. Damn, that was my favorite torch. All right, well, I'll cast Firebolt at him. That's a 16 to hit. You throw a bolt of fire and it looks like it'll hit him right in the chest until at the last second, the flames go out and it fizzles in the air. Thorn chuckles wryly. I told you, King Rex is not as helpless as he seems. You can't harm me here, though I can't blame you for trying. I did bring you in the town here after you worked so hard to save it. Yeah, why'd you do that? It's not an easy thing to explain. However, I realized something as I was in that jail cell. The dark powers have been manipulating me. I thought that Rex had spoken to me in a dream, told me to go find the three of you and go to Loudwater, told me to bring those damned vials, all to find that artifact and that it would cure the domain. I was desperate. Do you know how long I've been trying to fix all of this? To fix his mistakes? He levels a finger at King Rex. So you found out you were being manipulated and then decided to do the exact thing that the dark powers wanted to you to do? That was real smart, Thorn. No, not quite. See, I realized that the three of you had thwarted them. You had the vials. You had a plan to get rid of an army that no doubt some dark power had set in motion, and you had defeated that wicked priest. You won. The three of you somehow actually beat them. I was certain that I would be trapped in that cell or killed as the town was taken here to darken. Then I wasn't. I was freed, and the town was safe. Yeah, we won. Why did you betray us then? Because that was a small battle in an extremely long war. If the three of you were able to win there, then I realized that there was finally a chance to win here. I had given up hope that that was possible, you see. Can I roll insight to see if he is telling the truth? Why would you roll it? Don't you have like the worst insight out of all of us? I think Barack should do it. Joden said it first. He should get the roll. Agreed. Damn, that's only a five. Told you guys. You can't see any holes in his story. All right, Thorne, I believe you. That sounds plausible. I'm willing to believe you too, against my better judgment, but you need to tell us the whole story. Why is King Rex in a coma? And why did you say that all of this was his mistake? What exactly is even going on in Darken? Very well, that seems reasonable. If I tell you that, are you willing to help me fix Darken for good? I guess. I mean, if you are talking about putting King Rex back in power, wouldn't that mean there is still a dark power ruling over Darken though? You called him the Shadowed One or something like that? Yes, Rex is the champion of the Shadowed One, though it is not quite the same as most of the other champions. I can tell you the history, if you so wish, and how Darken came to be in the state it is now, but only if you will then help me fix it. Otherwise, I need to get to work on other matters and other hopes. 
You three have given me many ideas. Okay, yeah, I think we have a deal. As long as there is a suitable amount of gold at the end of this. Yes, I will make sure you're all well rewarded. And I think you will find that gold is less rare and easier to find in Darken. Most of the vendors deal in shadow shards instead, and gold is worth less, so you can get more of it than you would back in the Sword Coast. Exchange rates are pretty good. What exactly are shadow shards too? It's a fairly common mineral back in the Sword Coast, Obsidian. Very rare here in the domains, though. It is cut and processed into shards such as these. He tosses down a bag which falls with a clink. Inside the bag, you find 60 little shards of obsidian coated in a clear resin for durability and shaped like a teardrop. Interesting. All right, tell us what's going on then. Very well. Just over 2,000 years ago, King Rex ruled another kingdom in the Sword Coast. It was a small duchy compared to the sprawling kingdoms of today, though. His time there wasn't of great import, though I did serve him even all the way back then. Until he was betrayed by his wife, Valina. It was only due to sheer luck and his natural magical aptitude that he escaped with his life. And I followed him. After running day and night away from our home, we found ourselves engulfed in a thick fog. Before long, we found ourselves in the village of Barovia, in the Domains of Dread. Barovia was, and still is to the best of my knowledge, ruled by a champion of vampire named Strahd von Zarevich. You must understand, the Domains are prisons, mostly for the champions of the Dark Powers, but also for the poor souls who find themselves trapped within. What do you mean, prisons? There is no escape for the Dreadlords unless their very souls are destroyed. They are like gods, but only within their lands, and they cannot escape. King Rex and Strahd got along well at first, researching the mists and looking for a way out. Strahd was a snake, though. He could have let Rex go at any point if he so wished, but kept him as a prisoner. Until a dark power noticed Rex as well, the Shadowed One, a dark power known for secrets and knowledge. Rex used the dark power to escape and came here to darken. It was ruled then by a petty dreadlord that was easy enough to depose, and so Rex came to own his own domain of dread, but he was trapped here as a prisoner. That's a bum deal. Sounds like you and Rex had a streak of bad luck then. It still has not ended. Rex was always searching for more knowledge, wanting to get back to the Sword Coast and take his revenge on those who had betrayed him. The Shadowed One led him to a rite that would allow Rex to become a lich, an undead being of tremendous power. Keep in mind, this was over the course of about 20 years. In that time, Rex had even remarried and sired a son, Zalathor. But Rex never wavered from trying to be free from his prison. The process to becoming a lich is a painful one, paved with a river of blood. But Rex wasn't going to just murder anyone. So he took prisoners, murderers, and traitors, and put them to death as part of the ritual. I won't condone what he did, but it was his way of trying to maintain his humanity by not shedding innocent blood. It came to the final day. The ritual was almost complete when the final prisoner came before him. It wasn't another prisoner, though. It was his son, Zalathor. All right, so he killed his son and ascended to lichhood then? No, he refused. He demanded that another prisoner be brought before him. Zalathor insisted that if his father were to take one more life, it would have to be his own. Rex continued to try to refuse and even fought off a possession by the Shadowed One. But ritual magic is dangerous. The ritual demanded a sacrifice and Zalathor suddenly began bleeding out without a wound. Azalin used all of his concentration and magic to prevent his death. What happened next was disorienting. Even after literal millennia spent trying to remember, I still haven't been able to fully remember what happened. There was an explosion of green energy of some sort, and the mists flooded the land. It took over everything, and Azalin was weeping over the body of his son. There was darkness then, and then it was gone. Rex sat on his throne, face furrowed in concentration, and the mists receded. Not quite to where they were before, but significantly lessened. Then the death wall went up. Damn. Agreed. The kingdom fell apart over the next couple of months and years. The mists have slowly encroached in, eating more and more of the land, and the people realized they were in essence, immortal. Once one died, they would reform at the castle within a few days. There were some sieges at first, but then powerful magic began protecting this place. I am the gatekeeper here, the royal ambassador. Nobody can enter without my permission, and I send reformed undead back to wherever they were before. Most of them don't remember who they were in previous lives unless they have somehow attracted the attention of a dark power. Okay, so the kingdom is still continuing to fall apart? But it sounds like you think that King Rex is holding it all together, but it is taking all of his will to do so? All because he failed a ritual that was designed to turn him into a lich? And if what you say about everyone else is true, how do you still remember if you aren't the champion of a dark power? More or less. I've lost hope that he would awaken over the past thousand years or so. That was until I had a dream where he talked to me. But of course, that wasn't him. I'm not even sure which dark power it was. I don't know why I remember everything. I have guessed that it is due to me holding favor in King Rex's court. All right, I can agree not to kill you, I suppose. So we can probably help you out then. 
This is going against my better judgment, though. I just don't see any other way. How do we get to Mantira Bay? That's where you said Baron Midas was at, right? Indeed. That is the home base of the Night Watchers. Who are the Night Watchers? The doctor mentioned that most visitors are handled by them. The doctor? Dr. Necrotech, I presume? Interesting fellow. I haven't quite figured him out yet. He is new to Darken, which is quite strange. But he doesn't seem to be on the side of a dark power. Anyways, the Night Watchers are an underground group of enforcers and assassins. They claim to be the solution to crime and corruption, but honestly, they are one of the roots of it. Baron Metis is their leader, hiding deep under the radar in Mantira Bay. He controls all of the incoming shipments from the Shadow Shippers, merchants who traverse the mists and trade between the different domains. That answers who the Shadow Shippers are then. How do they cross the mists? I don't know. They have been coming here ever since Rex and I arrived in Darken. All right, that brings us back to my original question. How do we get there? Well, I use teleportation circles to transport everyone back to where they came from, or at least where I suspect they came from. I can send you there when you are ready. Though after that, you are on your own. I was already away from the castle for far too long while you were accompanying me to Loudwater. How did you get out of Darken then? If you were able to leave, then I assume you have a way out? I thought it was Rex who had given me permission, but some other dark power must have opened the way out. I simply rode with my caravan out into the mist and found myself outside Fandelver. Interesting. Not sure if I believe you, but I'm itching to kill someone, and apparently we aren't going to be able to kill you. All right, finally, any tips on handling those haze krakens and stuff out there? The hazelings will largely ignore any organized settlements and structures, particularly graveyards. The only exception is if they are threatened or confused. So the one that attacked Loudwater was just confused then? A haze kraken attacked Loudwater, and it is still intact? Impressive. It was a haze inkling. Though now that I say that, I realize that we probably don't know that. Ben, you had said that during combat that one time. Oh yeah. Hmm, let's say that Dr. Necrotech informed you of the name and you put it together after seeing the Haze Krakens from the graveyard. Ah, that makes more sense. Still impressive. Loudwater must have been placed in its typical track. The mists chose where it would be located. It was only good fortune that you made it to the castle so quickly. I only reformed after you killed me this morning. That was a fun time. You deserved it. I do not hold it against you. Well, are you ready to head to Mantira Bay then? Yeah, I guess let's get out of here. Oh, but first, Loudwater needs food and help if more of those haze inklings or a haze kraken attacks. I'll make sure they have an adequate supply of food and water. Ilaluk is only a day's journey north of there. Oh yeah, can you actually take us there? It would be good to be in a large city again. I hope that Mantira Bay is large enough for you. I could send you to Ilaluk, though you would become an undead if I did so. There is only death inside of the city. It was the most affected by the eclipse. Is the eclipse when that whole thing with Rex happened? Yes, that is what the inhabitants have taken to calling it, at least. Any who travel to Illaluk will die after passing through the necrotic zone. Well, that sucks. All right, to Mantira Bay then. I'm hoping that there are merchants and stuff there. It is the main location where the Shadow Shippers enter Darken, though some do pass through Nevaker Springs as well. You'll find plenty of merchants for whatever you need. All right, finally, if gold isn't really worth much here, mind giving us an advance or some Shadow Shards or anything? It'd be nice to have enough money to do what we need to in Mantira Bay. I'm guessing it won't be easy or cheap to find the leader of the Night Watchers. I must be rubbing off on you, Sleepy Joe. That's a brilliant idea. All right, roll for persuasion. He'll definitely give you some since you made a good argument, but how much will be dependent on your roll? Wow, I'm impressed. That's a 21. That is a valid argument. Very well. In addition to the 60 Shadow Shards I tossed down earlier, I'll give each of you 100 Shadow Shards each. So you'll all have a total of 120 Shadow Shards. Fair enough? Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Thorn. Though honestly, you also owe us, I believe, 500 gold pieces each for helping you obtain the artifact. You didn't bring me the artifact, though. Well, we still helped you, and the artifact is here in Darken now. Very well. I'll give each of you an additional 150 Shadow Shards, but that is it. Sounds like a good deal. All right, where's the teleportation circle now? Just through these doors. Give me a moment to collect your money. He exits through a side door and brings back three small bags. Each of these is also an enchanted bag of holding. It won't hold a lot, but should cover any and all money that you obtain while here in Darken. Your 250 Shadow Shards are inside. Wow, thanks, Thorn, for reals this time. All right, as he opens the door to the teleportation room, this seems like a good spot to end this session, yeah? I gotta say, him giving us all that money definitely helped win me back over. Maybe he really was just hopeless and saw a slim way out by betraying us and sending an entire town to the Domains of Dread. Yeah, I don't know if I quite forgive him, but I can sympathize with his situation. I can't even imagine how long 2,000 years of watching your kingdom be torn apart would feel. He saw a way out, and didn't want to risk us not being willing to come along. Yeah, seems like Peter might actually be a good guy. 
Mary, Mother of God, I'm going to smack you so hard you won't be able to run again in the next election, Joe. All right, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already to help out the channel. See you all tomorrow.